Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, I have a bottle of um, Tenute Silvio Nardi Brunello di Montalcino 2012 in front of me, and um, it's empty. Um, it's cup final day. Uh, what date is that? Is it the 27th of May? I can't remember when it is. It's 26th or 27th. Anyway, um, Arsenal have just won uh, 2-1. Uh, so I opened this bottle um, just before kickoff, and I smelt it, and it smelt rather... Um, it smelled just a bit rather tight, rather oaky. I smelt it again at half time and it was starting to uh, blossom a little bit more. Um, and uh, so, um, yeah, they just won. The, uh, I haven't, um, I paused the telly, so I'm going to watch the cup presentation later on. Uh, but um, what's it smell like now? Better give it a sniff. These are the sort of wines that really need time to come out of their shell. So what's happening now is um, it's almost like it's lost some of that um, slightly aggressive nature that it would have had uh, when I first opened it. So we were like we were two hours, two hours on from uh, that, that first sniff and the first pour into this glass. And um, so um, the oak is still a little bit there. There's still like a little toasty edge there. Um, but uh, this rather gorgeous, voluptuous, um, cherry berry, a little bit of very ripe black currants is there. But there's also a touch of herbs and um, something I don't normally get in, um, in, in Sangiovese, a little hint of orange peel. Uh, something I more associate more with grapes like um, Syrah or Torriga Nacional, but it smells like uh, with every passing second, it's just growing and growing and just getting more, um, yeah, ready to uh, really strut its stuff. I'll have a taste. Still really young, tight, tannic, and that oak is um, giving a framework of extra tannins there with a little bit of. Uh, uh, not not so much the vanilla edge of uh, of oak, more that dry tannic confidence, and which is fine when you've got this this amount of fruit to to flesh it out. Um, I'm about to slap a ribeye on the griddle, and uh, so we'll be eating probably in about half an hour. I'll give it I'll sort of give it a few minutes each side, and then uh, time to to relax. But I think what's going to happen in that intervening half hour, particularly if I pour ourselves a, a, a generous measure, is some of that tannin is, uh, it's not going to disappear. Tannin doesn't really disappear uh, in, in the course of um, a, a few minutes. It takes quite a lot of time to precipitate out in a bottle. But I think the fruit is just going to grow. And uh, it's almost like the backbone will stay the same. But the, the flesh round that backbone will just get bigger and bigger. At the moment, it's, uh, it's really tasty. But it still feels like a pup. Work in progress. Uh, but absolutely delicious. And uh, classy. And yeah, it's, it's about a minute now since I swallowed it, and it's still hanging in there. And uh, with, this, with this sort of, I hesitate to use the word masculine, but there's, a, there's sort of like a, a, a real slight showman type of character to it that, that makes you want to go, oh, go on, show me a little bit more, show me a little bit more. So um, I'll see if I, I can manage to drink it slowly over the course of the meal, because I think... It's um, I, almost a wine I want to open now and drink tomorrow uh, because it still feels like it's blossoming so much. But um, uh, yeah, so if you get a bottle now, um, if if you if you're able to give it a few more years, but um, if you're not able to, pour it out two, three, four hours in advance. Maybe even open at lunchtime, drink at dinner, and maybe even open one night, and drink the following night. But. Whichever way you do it, I think it's going to give you a rather a lot of pleasure. See you soon.